Craft Corner. How in the world are you guys doing today? It is so good to see you again and thank you so, so much for stopping back by to see what I'm up to. And what I'm up to today, well, as you saw, Chris just helped me make a couple of batches of my regular peanut butter fudge. And he helped me stir. He helped me stir. To be honest with you, you know, y'all know about my back. It goes in and out like the wind. You know, how'd you hurt your back, Arlen? I haven't a clue. It comes from an old injury when I was younger and uh, on a bus with a bunch of drumline <laughs> participants and the bus driver popped her clutch and took off and sent me flying back down the bus. I have no idea what I did to tweak it this time. Could be the stirring because I started to stir and that really hurt me. So Chris took over the stirring as you saw and helped me out, bless his heart. He's always right there to help me. Y'all are right when you guys say, he is always right there by my side to help me. And, or if he's not here, he's not too far away, you know? And he is a blessing to me. Well, he always has been from the very first moment I met the man. He's been a blessing to me. <laughs> but, you know, especially with times like this. So I've tweaked my back, which is nothing new. It's okay. It'll be fine. I'm just going to do this video. All I have to do is sit here and talk to y'all. <laughs> It's not like I'm going to over, over, uh, overdo it doing this other than with my yammering on here. Uh, and we'll get the Roomba out and, and let, send it around, which is great. It, it climbs the rugs. It does everything beautifully. The hardwood floors don't even look dirty, honestly. It's just going to be my dad and my immediate family here in this house. I am not going to kill myself to clean. You know, dad's sheets are fine. Everything's good. Everything's fine. You know, so I'm ready for everybody to come. Now, that said, dad's coming tomorrow and we're supposed to make that Not Your Mama's banana pudding on camera. I'm hoping to be able to do that with him or even if I set him and Chris to work on it with a little direction, that might need to happen. I'm not sure, we'll see. We're gonna play it by ear. But I'm, I've done all the hard work, you know, that needs to be done. So I'm ready for Christmas, y'all, I'm ready, you know. I'm just going to sit and edit this tonight and do my nails maybe at some point or could do that tomorrow night. But regardless, I'm yammering. I'm yammering. Like you all care about any of this. Anyway, as you saw, we did the two batches of fudge. And I wanted to show you a little container that I got from Walmart. Now, I got this last year and I don't know that I've seen them in Walmart this year. But I'm going to put both batches I think will fit in here. Uh, and these are really cute. They're really meant for cookies, but they're carry you know, they're, they're, and I have two of these and I don't know why I didn't think to put the, the chocolate or the Reese cup fudge in it, but that's okay. That, that tin will snug in here and we can carry it like this with this. So, but isn't this cute and a perfect way to carry the fudge, you know, and I know it'll all fit in here. And I do have some paper doilies. I do have some paper doilies linked in my Amazon shop, uh, but be careful with these when you use them take them apart over a over a trash can you guys because just with them sitting here uh, they've cried you know little little pieces of the stencil you know where they've cut them out I am assuming a machine does this and packages them all up and doesn't discard the little stencil fallout pieces <laughs> it's a mess so anyway I wanted to show you that just in case you hadn't seen that they are really cute to, to carry cookies even a pie probably would fit in there. That would be a cute pie carrier. Um, 
you know, a round cake, maybe a cheesecake, that would fit in there probably. You know, that can be used for so many things and, and held over from year to year to year. So as I said, I got that last year. I hope they have them this year for y'all. I hope they do. Not that anybody's gonna be venturing into Walmart anytime soon, but look at a look for one after Christmas sale, you know, on an after Christmas sale. Maybe they'll have some then. But I'm also coming back today with a Q&A. I have several questions that I'm going to answer. But first of all, I had a fantastic uh, result from you guys telling me your ideas about, you know, uh, instead of vlog miss, what should it be? Something miss? Well, I'll tell you, my couple of favorite ones are ones that aren't something something miss. But uh, y'all came up with some great ones. I'm going to zip through them real quick. Um, uh, number one is from Lisa Sagardia, tea time with Arlen. Then two, Melissa Wyatt, how about vloguary? That was a good one. Number three uh, from Charlene Stevenson, vlog vow for Valentine's Day. That was a good one. Uh, this one from David Reitz, chitten and chatting with Arlen. I really like that one. Cindy Fusco uh, was vlog of cheer. That was a good one. Uh, number six, Pam Glover, chit chat or vlog this and uh, she said chit chat or vlog this and that. <laughs> vlog chit chat or vlog this or that. <laughs> That's cute. Number seven from Jamie Chambers, a day in the life vlog. That's a good one. Number eight from Kathy Brown, vlog deco. Number nine, I'm just gonna zip through them. Vlog number nine, uh, because there's like 25. <laughs> Diane Stacy, uh, how about vlog us, LOL. And she said, well, Merry Christmas. Number 11 from Rhonda Kapler, vlog, vlog chats. Number 12, uh, Myra Moore, vlogs corner. That's a good one. Uh, Sherry A, vlog mid. It's a good one. Judy Gardner, uh, vlogs Spiration, vlog spiration. That's pretty good. The L O G dash spiration, like inspiration or vlog spire. Number 15, uh, vlog, you know. <laughs> I laughed so hard when I saw this one, Cheryl. Vlog, you know. <laughs> uh, Janice Forend, uh, along with Arlen. Uh, she also said another one, vlogs and hugs all around. Uh, vlog, you know, somebody else said that. <laughs> that was from Nancy Decos, I think. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, from Jane Fargo Farm, vlog days of winter. Instead of dog days of winter, vlog, get it? Vlog days of winter, that sound, that's a good one. Lydia, Miss Lydia Knight, uh, vlog chat. Evelyn Foster, uh, Winter Blues. Nancy Leathers, Vlog Between. Cheryl Ritchie, Vlogs Lens. Uh, Kim Carpenter, Vlog Between. And Carol Hale, I uh, was thinking Vlog Along. You know, you guys came up with so many good ones and I said I would pick the first three, but I had to read them all, you all. I had but to, I had to them read them all, you guys. I had to because Y'all took the time to think about it and type it out and send me a comment. So I wanted to read them all and acknowledge that I had seen all of them, which they are all really cool. But I think the winner, if you want to call it that, there are so many good ones. But I really like, I had um, named a video the other day, Chittin' and Chattin', whatever else I said. And I really like that. I like that. Chit Cause I always say that we're chitting and chatting, you know? So I think that's what I'll do. Chitting and chatting with Arlen for my in between, you know, and that way we're not pigeonholed into a, into a holiday or a season that can be the name of all of my vlogs in my in between, you know, in between all of my seasonal decor series. So that'll keep us going throughout the year. Even if it's just if I come back and say, hey, how you doing? Ask me a question, you know, or whatever, you know. Here I go with you know, you know. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm not succeeding though, you guys. I'm not. Oh, this is terrible. Okay, so I think that was the winner. Thank you, David Reeds, for chitting and chatting with Arlen. I think that's going to be what I'm going to go with. Uh, I love them all, though. You all did great. 
And I pick, well, anyway. Okay, I like the vlogs and hugs all around. I've liked the vlog days of winter. I like that one. I, I like them all. Uh, they're all really good. Vlog between, vlog, I love it. Vlog lens, I like that. All of them, all of them. Anyway, okay. Okay, on we go with our questions now. I didn't even number them. It looks to be about seven or eight. So let's get started. Uh, let me mute my computer because I'm getting texts and emails and everything else coming in here. Okay, the first one, this one has been sitting here for a little bit, Brian, and I know you've been waiting for me to answer this. So I am going to touch on this now, and I very well might come back and do uh, one of, a, a, like a video on my Arlen's Travels channel to answer this question, because I think this would be a good question for my Arlen's Travels channel. And as I mentioned to you guys, and you might not have known this, Brian, I am I'm going to be separating the two, my Travels and my uh, Arlen's Country Craft Corner. You know, I want to keep my Arlen's Country Craft Corner more to my decorating and my crafting and things like that and my Arlen's Travels to my travels. I want people to be able to find whatever they're looking for and not get confused, you know. So if those of you who are interested in my travels, please do head over to Arlen's Travels. There's a link in the description and do subscribe there, you guys, because once travel ramps up again, and it will, Lord willing, it will. I'm going to be, you know, we're going to be doing more travels and all of my travel stuff will be on our lens travels. And this channel will go more quiet for a little while while I'm traveling, you know. So just wanted to reiterate that a little bit as we come to the end of 2020. Thank goodness. <laughs> okay, so, but Brian asks, he says, I have a future video idea for you. And that's why I wanted to kind of explain, of explain, kind of, I wanted to explain that, Brian, is that I, I, I might not be approaching these subjects on this, my channel, but I am going to answer your question very quickly here. Uh, and then from then on, any travel questions you guys might have, maybe, maybe point them over to Arlen's Travels and I can do a Q&A over there or something one time. That might be a good way to kind of ramp up that channel again. It's gone real quiet, as y'all can imagine. <laughs> Okay, Brian Olson, I have a future video idea for you. Update on how the cruise lines are doing during COVID and how to plan a trip for novice cruisers. Thanks. Uh, I don't know exactly how the cruise lines are doing. I do know that uh, the heads of the cruise lines all got together and wrote out a list of procedures that they would be willing to go through, hoops that they would need to jump through in order to get their cruise line started up again. And they submitted that to the CDC. The CDC in turn said, had opened up questions for people to answer and to leave their comments about whether they want cruising to go on or open up again and would they be afraid and i don't know all kinds of questions well not not questions necessarily but you were to give your opinion and uh to tell you the truth i don't exactly know how that worked because i never did do that uh, i just know my travel agent had told me about that pam uh they're not doing well if i'm honest the cruise lines, you know, as far as I know, are not doing well. Of course, I don't know their financial state. I don't know any of that. I'm just a lay cruiser, you know. Uh, I do know that they're not up and running again yet. I do know that we've had many cruises canceled and been given. We never had any. We had future cruise credits. See, this is really hard to explain. Future cruise credits down on those on those cruises. And so we didn't have any actual money down on them, although we had reserved excursions, which we had paid for. All monies have been, you know, returned to us and so forth. So uh, hopefully as this vaccine gets out, up and running and out into the public, things will lighten up in the cruising industry and around the travel industry, you know. Uh, and then, and I'm not going to say anything more about that because I don't want to say something wrong. You know, I don't want to say, and I don't want to be misquoted or anything like that because it's, it's a, it's a, it's such a sad situation right now. It really is. Um, and how do you, how to plan a trip for novice cruisers? My, uh, my first inclination is to always tell a first time cruiser to get yourself a travel agent. 
It doesn't have to be somebody who lives in your town either. It can be somebody who is online because they do most of their work online anyway. You know, they procure your air fare, they procure your cruise. You, can, you might get some extra onboard spending cash from them or a specialty dinner from them. Uh, I have my own travel agent that I can link below for you. Uh, but that's what I would do is to get a travel agent or reach out to me or to join Facebook groups. Although join mine, don't join these nasty, there's some nasty ones out there, you guys, who think that they can just talk however they want to talk because you know that computer screen is their, is their uh, you know, saves them from all, I guess, that they can just think that they can be so mean and hateful. Uh, but Anyway, I'm not sure if you're planning on cruising soon or what you're thinking about, but I would highly recommend that you get yourself a travel agent, most definitely to help with cruises. There are so many moving parts to a cruise. You know, so also, I would always encourage a novice cruiser to go to your cruise the day before you cruise. Again, I'm going to stop here because I could go on and on and on, and I don't want to bore all the crafters and decorators out there with my travel stuff. I'm, I'm like a, a two people here, you know. I, I know a good bit about travel and I know a good bit about decorating and crafting and stuff. And, and sometimes the two don't meet and I don't want to offend anybody or make anybody bored by listening to me ramble. So anyway, Brian, there we go. <laughs> now, Brian also asked another question. Uh, hi, Erlin. I have a question. The ice blue and silver is my favorite color combination, followed by the blue and white. All of those colors are cold colors. So my question for you is, what are your tips and tricks to decorate in cold colors while man maintaining a cozy feeling? What advice can you give on making formal rooms comfortable for guests? Many thanks and hugs, Brian. That's a good question. That's a good question. I... I'm not a proud person, but I pride myself on being able to make any room cozy. And I think one hint would be lighting, would be like fairy lights or soft lighting or decorative lighting, even if it's just a lamp. It doesn't have to be a, you know, fairy lights blinking or anything like that, just a subtle dim light in a room. I think a, a, a light in the evening hours cozies up a room immediately. There are times when I have people vis coming to visit that I'll turn on the lights in, in my formal, more formal rooms just to give an extra oomph, just a little extra punch, you know? So I would say lighting is, is a big deal. Uh, I would say, yes, you can use your cold colors, you can use your, you know, your ice blues and, and whatnots, but add a cream in there. Don't make it a stark white, add a cream. Cream, in my mind, softens things down a little bit. Use softer decor. Use um, like lamb's ear. Lamb's ear is a great uh, floral, if you will, to use in a in all all through the year. As you saw, I even use lamb's ear on a Christmas wreath for my daughter this year. You know, that's a good. Uh, I like to use cotton in the for more formal rooms. Now, I know not everybody's from the South and not everybody wants to use cotton and that's fine, but there are other, you know, pay attention to your florals. I don't know, to tell you the truth, if, if I, I've never thought about how to tell you how to soften up a room. That's a good question. I'm gonna have to think on that some more. I hope I've given you some tips that may help though. Lighting in your hutches. I think that's very important. I, I have found ever since I cleaned out all my hutches last year that decorating the inside of the hutches and putting some decorative lights inside the hutches has really helped to warm up the room. And it's not just a bunch of dishes sitting in here. Now I have, you know, milk glass dishes on this hutch behind you guys, but I'm talking about your formal china and your crystal and everything lined up and just perfectly set in your hutch. Take that stuff out, pack it away for a little bit and, dec and, and decorate seasonally one year, just try it and see if that doesn't help to warm up a room. You know, use conversation pieces, use, you know, vintage pieces or pieces that are important to you. Pull something out of your hope chest or a cedar chest that you might have or a back of a drawer. Go searching your house and using some, you know, some sentimental decor, that kind of thing. And I'm rambling on this one too. Oh my word, you guys. 
Okay, I'm gonna stop there. <laughs> Hopefully that'll help you. <laughs> okay, thank you for those questions, Brian. <laughs> I hope I helped in some way. Okay, the next one is from Karen Adams. She says, I'm new to your channel. Well, welcome, welcome, Karen. Thank you so much for, for stopping in here. and Thank you for subscribing. I appreciate it so much. Uh, and I was wondering if you do spring and Easter decorating also. I sure hope so. <laughs> and can I, uh, can I hear everybody else say, yes, she does. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do do, unless I'm traveling. Uh, last year I was traveling. Of course, I've been home since March, so, and, and maybe never will travel again, I don't know. Uh, but uh, usually I do spring Easter combo sometimes. Uh, it depends on when Easter falls in the year, but yes, I definitely do some Easter. I definitely do spring. I definitely do, uh, I did Pioneer Woman one year. I just did a whole decor out of Pioneer Woman. I'm not planning on that this year. Uh, I do usually do a patriotic summer decor, but I have thought about maybe going coastal one year, although Chris isn't real keen on that. But I was thinking of taking maybe the front rooms to coastal something. I'd like to dabble in that a little bit. I'd just like to challenge myself a little bit in that, you know? Uh, but I love my patriotic, so that's going to be hard because I love patriotic. So patriotic's usually summer. We usually go, uh, January is usually either a little bit of winter, but not usually. I do usually put it back to my everyday decor and will be this year to my blue and white decor. And then uh, if I do anything for Valentine's Day or St. Patrick's Day, it's just stick a little something here or there. Very rarely do I do that. I do my mailbox sometimes. For those, you know, and then we'll do Easter and then spring and then patriotic usually, then fall, then. But yes, I decorate throughout the year, changing out. But I took my decor to one cohesive design in my blue and white cottage decor. I have a whole playlist if you would like to go and see what I'm talking about. And uh, I add to that decor for my Easter, for my spring and so on. I haven't had a chance to do it for Easter really too much. So that'll be a challenge this year, won't it? Okay. All right, Karen. Stick with me, girl. We're going to be decorating. Trust me. <laughs> okay. Next one is from Katie. Hey, Katie. Hi, Erlen. Merry Christmas. I have a question for you. Have you ever gotten rid of an item of decor, donated or just thrown out, and then regretted it? I gave away a beautiful crystal bowl some years ago because it was never brought out at any time during the year and have spent the last five years or so trying to find one just like it. I so wish I had kept it. So I wondered if you had ever done the same with anything of yours. Uh, we called the period between Christmas and New Year's Twixmas. I missed this. I'm so sorry. Twixmas. That's somewhere betwixt one period and the other. That's cute. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, not really, Katie, only because I have a little system that I've done for years and years. If I haven't used something, say, with Christmas decor, for instance, I didn't use a lot of my burgundies this year. They will go in however many bins it takes up, two or three, all by themselves, and they'll get set to one side. If I haven't touched anything in those bins or what I haven't touched in those bins after three years goes, and I don't look back, I don't pass go, I don't collect $200, I let it go. I let it go physically and I let it go, you know, emotionally and in every other way. Very rarely though, will I get rid of a family heirloom, like a crystal dish like that, very rarely. I've kept all of my dishes. I don't know what I'm going to do with all of that stuff. Right now, I have it and I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't think I'm gonna be using it my girls are not very formal. I don't know. That is like a little conundrum for me. I just don't know what I'm going to do. Because I have a sentimental attachment to them, but yet I, I'm i going to have to do something with them when we move. I can't be storing, you know, all of these copious amounts of dishes. And I've got a lot of them, you know. So that were my mom's and my grandma's. Uh but I feel for you, Katie. I mean, I would imagine that would be very, very daunting for you. Okay. Uh, thank you for that question. I hope I helped. I probably didn't on that one. I don't know. Uh, okay. Next one is Brenda Edwards. Hey, Brenda. Hi, Erlen. 
Thanks for including us in your Christmas decor and planning. If I need ideas or that moment of get myself in the Christmas spirit, I just tune myself into your channel, LOL. I do have a question. When wrapping your gifts, I don't do much of that, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> do you set up a wrapping station or wrap as you purchase? I always wait to wrap all gifts at one time. Last thing to do on is, uh, one, at one time, last thing on the to-do list. I set up a folding table with all the accessories and wrap my heart away. I love the sound of ripping paper and crushing bows and scotch tape popping on Christmas morning. P.S. Try not to bag everything, but it's starting to get tempting the older I get, LOL. <laughs> Hugs and love. <laughs> Hugs and love to you. It's getting real tempting for me too. For, for those of you who've been with me from the beginning here will know that gift wrapping is not my favorite thing. And isn't that crazy? Why is that? I'm a crafter for crying out loud. I'm a decorator. You would think I would love to gift wrap. I do not. It is my biggest pet peeve, honest to Pete. And that's terrible bah humbug to me. <laughs> I'm just being honest though, you guys. That is not something that I yearn to do. <laughs> but when we do, and Chris does most of the wrapping, I'll be honest. Uh, and we usually set something up here at the at the counter and it usually ends up to be, we have every intention of it being as we go, but it usually ends up to be in one fail swoop. <laughs> so usually we set it up at the counter here, but I don't set up a special wrapping station. No, it's a good idea though, but I don't do that. Okay, two more here, Pamela Reynolds. Fudge looks fabulous and Merry Christmas. And the same to you, Merry Christmas. I have a question and maybe it would be better for after the holidays, but I was wondering when you put away your holiday decor, do you keep everything or do you decide to get rid of some things and do you consign them at a store, donate or just toss? I downsized two years ago and was wondering what you do. I know you have a big home and basement, but was wondering, I'm looking for ideas and I guess organizational ideas, thank you. Well, Pamela, I kind of just touched on this with Katie's question here. Wasn't it that she, yeah. Uh, and I do get rid of things. I usually, it just depends on what it is. Sometimes I will trash it if it's just decrepit, so decrepit that nobody else would be able to get any use out of it or be able to do something with it, like repaint it or re, you know, repurpose it in some way. If it's that bad, I throw it out. If not, if it's not that bad, I will usually donate to the Salvation Army or to Goodwill. Mostly Goodwill, because frankly, it's more convenient to get to here in our town. And, um, but yeah, I definitely do. And as you heard my three-year rule, that goes with my clothes too. My clothes have been hanging in my closet for too long. I don't care if I've grown out of them or I think I may grow back into them and get rid of them, you know, donate them usually. Purses too. Everything. I do that. I have a, a three-year rule. I do that. And I implemented that a long, long time ago. And I try to adhere to that pretty, pretty closely as much as I can, you know. Uh, organize ideas and I guess organizational ideas. As far as organizational ideas, I think you've heard me say this, but when I put away my seasonal decor, uh, I use bins and I label the bins with what is in them. And I even use different colored duct tape, like red for Christmas, orange or yellow for fall, pink for Easter, you know, things like that. So that I know if I, if, if I don't have anything written on it, I'll know at least that it's Easter or Christmas or whatever. And they are separated by seasons in the basement. They're not just put down there, you know, willy nilly. But anyway, that's what I do. I hope that helped. <laughs> Okay, last one, Jan Reynolds. You mentioned your frozen red punch. How do you freeze the punch? In the container? It comes in or another. Do you set it out early so that it becomes slushy? Wonder how it's, wondering how it's served. Jan, let me go get the punch that I use. I don't make the punch. I use the punch that I buy at uh, Giant, our food store, our grocery store here in town. And all I do is I turn it over upside down and I put it in the punch bowl, which you can see right there. I put it in the punch bowl and I do let it sit for a while and then eventually you can pull the container off of it and I let it sit there and yes, like as you say, get slushy. And then I add the ginger ale to it and then, you know, just go and, and kind of break it up after a while and then keep adding the ginger ale. And that's how I do my punch. I don't do anything special. I don't make the punch 
at all. This is what our family likes. We've been having it ever since I can remember, ever since Giant sold it probably, but literally ever since I can remember as a child, you know? So I'm gonna go get that punch and I'll show you what I use. And then I'm gonna check my one place where I can check for more questions and make sure that I have every question that answered that I can answer in this video. Because after this video, I'm probably gonna go a day or two without having a video from me, just because it's, you know, my dad is coming and then it's Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and we'll be, you know, like everybody is very busy with our family. So I wanna try to get everything that I can in this one. And if dad and I do the Nacho Mamas, then that'll go up sometime during whenever I can get it edited, you know? So let me go get that punch. I'll be right back. Okay, this is it. It's called Mayfield Fruit Punch Red. And this does have directions on it, so let me look. It says, directions allow three hours for thawing. Place in punch bowl, add three quarts of cool ginger ale before serving. Serves 25 to 30. Well, we're not gonna have 25 to 30, but we go through that lickety split, let me tell you. <laughs> so there we go. That's pretty much what I do too. I have to set it out, usually two hours, but I'll know three hours. On Christmas Eve, I'll get that a little earlier. All right, you guys, now let me go put this back real quick so it doesn't start thawing out here. And I'll be right back in questions. All right, here we go. Somebody wanting to borrow Chris. <laughs> I don't think we need, I need to answer that. <laughs> and then the last one I have is Jan's, your, your question about the red punch. So we're good to go, you guys. I am completely caught up on all of my questions. Now that doesn't mean that you need to stop asking them. That just means that's all the questions that I'm gonna answer before Christmas, you know? And from now on, it will prob probably be uh, just my Not Your Mama's Banana Pudding demo with my dad if he's okay and if everything works out for us to do that. Um, please don't be disappointed if I can't get that up. You know, sometimes you get busy and doing things and things just get away from you. Time gets away from you. So I'm hoping that he and I can do that and bring that to you guys because I know y'all would love to see him on camera and I know he would like to do it. Uh, so I think that would be fun. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping we can do it. Uh, let me think. Other than that, I'm not sure what I'm going to, or when I'm going to be back after Christmas. It will be other than that video. It'll probably be after Christmas, probably a day or two. I'm probably going to go three or four days here without having anything up, you guys, which I know is unusual for me, but it's Christmas time. And I am going to take some time and spend it with my family. So now I am going to say in this video, so this is not going to be, this isn't a recipe demo or anything like that. I want to wish every single one of you a very, very, very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I'll be back before the New Year, but Happy New Year, Happy and Healthy New Year. Lord willing, you know, 2020 will soon be in the rear view mirror and we can say goodbye to 2020. Oh my goodness. Uh, please never forget the reason for the season. Jesus is the reason for the season. Let's remember why we celebrate, take pause, give thanks and take stock of what we need to be thankful for, what blessings we have in our life. They don't have to be big, they can be small. They can be un insignificant to others, but huge to you, you know? So I hope that you are able in whatever way to gather with your family or friends or both, uh, whether that's in person, via Zoom, via FaceTime, however, however, I know this is gonna be a different Christmas for all of us. Please, let's try to keep our chins up. up. Please, Please keep look looking up and know that this too shall pass. This too shall pass, you guys. We will get through this. We will get through it. We're walking through it with grace the very best we can. So let me go into my final words here and say thank you guys so much for stopping in here to visit with me today. And I hope all is well with everyone. And for all of you who might be st struggling or suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain, I hope that you have someone there with you taking care of you, helping you get through each day 
making the very, very best out of each day. I hope there's nothing weighing on your mind or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or from where it should be. I love y'all to bits to bits to bits, hugs all around, and I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And with all that said, I'll just say, until next time, y'all take good, good care. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas, y'all. Love you. Bye-bye. Look what we picked up for little Mavs. We got him a high chair. We ordered it from Walmart the other day, and it got delivered, and Chris is quickly putting it together here. And we're going to set it up and put it in the laundry room for the little tyke when he comes so he can sit at the table with us. <laughs> Cute little high chair. Perfect. All right, I know we're at the end of the video, but I'm going to go cut my fudge up. So just in case anybody wanted to stick around and watch how I cut my fudge correctly this time, I'll be right back. Okay, y'all, I neglected to turn my camera on to show you how I cut this fudge, but isn't it pretty? Good thing I have another one to cut over there, huh? I'm going to put this into this little dish, and I'll be back to show you how I did this in just a second. Okay, let's get out this batch. This is gonna lift right out of there, see that? Look at that. What we're gonna do, we're going to turn this over real quick here so I can unpeel the aluminum foil. Perfect, look at that. I'm going to put this over top and flip it again. Now, in order to cut this, this is a square pan, a nine by nine. This works out beautifully the way I cut it if you have an even numbered sided pan. If you have a 13 by nine, don't ask me how to do it because I'm, I'm just a mess with that, as you all saw the other day in the other day's video. But with this, I'm really good at cutting this. So we go to the center, cut two pieces. Then we go to the center of this piece and we cut. And we go from the center to the side and find the center, I'm just eyeballing it, and cut. And then we go to the center of each of those pieces and cut. Then we're going to turn it the other direction and do it the same. Do the same thing. Go to the center and cut. And into fast motion I go. So I'll finish putting this in the container here, and we'll do one more taste test. Going into fast motion until it's time to taste. And then I'll say my final, final goodbye. I promise. <laughs> Okay, you guys, here I am with one more fudge taste test. This turned out to be some of the best fudge we've ever made. Honestly, the texture is phenomenal. It's nice and soft, not crunchy at all. This is the best of the best of the best. I'm telling you, you guys, you got to try this fudge recipe. It's down in the description. Mmm. Excuse my pantry. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, it's so good. So, 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 so good. Hope you try it. 
Thank you again for stopping by. Merry, Merry Christmas to everybody. Love y'all to bits. See you next time. Bye-bye.